Oh, hi there. You're watching and or listening to North of Weatherfield, the Canadian Coronation Street podcast. My name is Brittle Star. My name's Shannon. Oh, wait, we're supposed to do the other stuff first, Correct. right? Correct. We're supposed to Sorry. talk about the date. Sorry. Go ahead. This week, we are talking about episodes that aired in Canada from May 27th to May 31st. So, if you haven't yet watched those and you want to, avert your ears. Avert your ears. Because we're going to be talking about everything that happened. We'll be putting no scores on the screen, so you don't have to avert your eyes. <laughs> no. Nope. Just turn captions off. Yeah. Um, let's play the theme. That was great, wasn't it? <laughs> I love that theme so much. Um, so yes, my name is Brittle Star. My name is Shannon. These aren't our real names, of course. My name this week is... I haven't planned mine yet. I forgot. <laughs> Who are you being? I'm being uh, Beth. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. That's pretty That's good. good. Who are you going to be? You um, prepared this, didn't you? I'm going to be... Oh, Gary, I think you just need another hug, Gary. It's just... I just... I just... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't mind this. You or Sarah. <laughs> Sarah's looking for any excuse to be hugging on Gary this week. Well, I mean... Fair dues, fair dues. Uh, we're coming to you live this week from, uh, well, not really live, obviously, but uh, we're coming to you this week from St. John's, Newfoundland, which is why we're in a hotel room. Yeah. You can tell by the prints. They look Newfoundlandy, don't they? <laughs> they are, actually. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and it's super foggy out, which is why we were super blown out. Yeah. Because it's not, because it's sun. It's definitely not sunshine. <laughs> Anyway, we're having a great time. But yes. let's talk about Coronation Street, Shannon. Let's. So this week, we are going to talk about Denny and Paul, Alia and Adam, uh, a little bit about Steve, mm. Daniel and Bethany, Glenda and George, uh, Liam, and Maria, Gary, and Sarah. Okay. I'm ready. Um, okay. So first, Denny and Paul. So Denny is Paul's dad. Mm-hmm. Um so Denny and uh, Paul have convinced Billy that he should leave them alone. The two of them are just going to hang out, yeah. you know, not get into trouble like last time. Mm-hmm. Um, and they convince Paul to leave and Paul and uh, sorry, Billy to leave. And Billy says, okay, the main thing is you can't leave Paul on his own. Right. Cannot be left on his own. Denny says, sure. Denny then immediately, as soon as Billy leaves, like I'm surprised the door had even shut behind him. And he decides <laughs> he needs to go and get some ice cream. Yeah. For them to have while watching this movie. Okay. So, uh, first of all, what was Denny going to do staying with... Do we think that Denny knows how to suction Paul? No, Denny doesn't ha- know anything. Plus, also, like, Paul's not just a... He's not like a cat or something. He's not yes. like... He's like... A, he's a human, a fully grown man with lots of current needs, health needs. Yes. So, yes. you know, it was silly. Um, Denny's out. He runs into Gemma. Mm -hmm. and uh, Gemma says, I thought you were with Paul, and he's like, no, no, Billy's there, that's fine. Um, He then convinces Gemma that it's time for him to meet the quad squad, Okay. who are um, at the CAF with Bernie. Bernie's working at the CAF, so the quads who are three, four, are all hanging out at at the CAF while their mom works Behind a hot stove. Yeah, it didn't add up. Or their grandma. Yeah. Didn't add up to me. Um, And Paul uh, has a a breathing emergency. He starts choking. Mm -hmm. He tries to call uh, emergency services, but of course he can't speak. And with a cell phone, you don't know exactly exactly where someone's calling from. No, exactly. Um, Especially if they're upstairs in a flat. So Denny eventually comes home and he finds Paul pretty much unconscious. Um, and he then gets in touch with the paramedics and, uh, he, they rush Paul to hospital. Well, I say they, Asha, Asha our student paramedic. Said, it said trainee paramedic on yeah. her jacket. Yeah. But essentially she was running the show. Well, and when they got to the hospital with this patient with MND, a really, uh, serious and not overly and common rare. condition, yeah. um, who's having problems with breathing Uh and they get to the hospital and it's decided that the experienced EMT should go in to ask when they're going to be able to take them into the hospital. Yeah. Leaving trainee Asha 
in charge. Sure. In charge in the uh, in, in the ambulance. Shannon, she's got glasses that are cool, and she's got a ponytail. <laughs> and then, when Asha had to go and do something, they just left Billy in charge of Paul. At one point. Yeah. I have concerns about emergency services yeah, over there me too. in uh, Weatherfield. Yeah. Um, Gemma runs into Denny on the street, and uh, she's like, "Didn't you hear Paul's in hospital?" And he's like, "Yeah, I know. I'm the one who called them." And she's like, oh, well, come on, I'll give you a lift with me to the right. hospital. And he's just bought himself some cans of beer. He's like, nah, I'm good. I don't think I need to go. And she's <laughs> like, yes, you do need to go. Come with me right now. Uh, he goes to the hospital. He is useless. He's yeah. combative. He yeah. doesn't like the fact he's being told off. Yeah. Um, and he says, that's it. I'm heading out. I'm leaving. Okay. So he storms off. Yeah. Now, this next scene wasn't on Gem. We actually felt it had cut off early, so we went to our TV recording. But Denny gets on the phone, and he makes plans to flog Paul's electric wheelchair. Yes. Because Paul, of course, didn't bring it to the hospital. I was him. scary that it wasn't on Jem. Yes, it was I a know. huge. It was a huge piece of the story. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyways, Bernie goes home, catches him about to do this, and tells him, take a hike, get out of here. You're mm. not welcome here anymore. Mm. Um, so I don't think we've seen the last of Denny. No. Is he a famous actor, that guy? I don't know. He looks like a famous actor. Is that actor. how you're trying to decide how long he's going to be in it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, next up, Alia and Adam. I was glad that it wasn't just us. In the comments, a whole bunch of people were saying, yeah, they weren't a, an item until two weeks ago. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. Um, so Alia and Adam... Um, have a meeting organized um, for Rich's company, Fabian's. First of all, my question is, why do Fabian's need to do business with Adam now that they have Alia? And apparently they're a law firm. So why is Fabian's law firm? I, I mean, they were supposed to be kind of dealing with the, are they the opposing counsel? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't understand. Plus, also, there's a risk of flooding in that office, as we know. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to leave your papers no, there. No, no, too dangerous. Um so Alia, it's just Alia and Adam there, and they're being super flirty. Um, and then Alia's ticked off at Adam because he's trying to give her some tips about being professional. Mm -hmm. And um, then Adam basically says to her, I I'm interested. And that's all it took for a big snog from Alia. So the two of them are snogging away in the office, and Rich walks in. Ugh. And to say, you know, he's not best pleased. He's currently paying this young woman who he's just hired. Yeah. And she's snogging their meeting partner. Um, Adam then uh, asks Rich to meet him at the pub and has a word about how professional Alia is, which is also insulting. It's a little, it came across a little misogynistic. Yes. A tad. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it apparently worked. Yeah. Rich and Adam sorted it all out. Which is, I mean, a couple of guys getting together. Two men getting together, sorting out a woman's exactly, problems. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, Alia is still allowed to go to Dublin. Yeah. Um, and then before she leaves as a going away gift, Adam gives her this big, chunky law book, um, which she's excited about. And uh, But inside, we see at the end, it's he's written, Love, Adam. With a little X. Because he's 17. Because he's 17. He has very nice handwriting, though. He has a 17-year-old's handwriting. <laughs> um, so Alia is obviously gone for a while. Yeah. Because the actor in real life is apparently having a baby. Are we going to be getting rid of Adam for a while? No. No? Absolutely he's, not. Right. You yeah. think he's staying? He's in his prime. He's, he's ready to go. But there's no one left to date. He'll find someone. He Maybe someone new. Maybe yeah. someone brand new. Yeah, I, don't, I, I did really have a problem with how shoehorned the whole relationship was, though. Yeah. It was just very pushed in, and it was like, ugh. especially with Yasmin at the end, giving her hugs and stuff and saying, are you sure there's not someone else that's going to miss? What are you talking about, Yasmin? And then when she says that, and then she asks about Adam, and Alia says, no, no, we're just friends. She says, oh, that's good, because I don't think he'd be good for you. It's like, well, why were you basically hinting that No, exactly. Be she was like, ooh, ooh, maybe you guys are a little secret admirer, you know, a little <laughs> snog action. And then she was like, oh, that's good, no, because he's a trouble guy. I yeah, don't know. Yasmin. It kind of felt like maybe the actor hadn't 
officially disclosed that she was expecting until she went on maternity leave, so they couldn't actually write a proper storyline, story and they had to hold off. Yeah. I don't know what was going on there. Um, so Liam, poor Liam. Poor Liam. So Liam is, we now realize he's having panic attacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after going to the martial arts, so he's trying to deal with everything on his own. Mm-hmm. Doesn't want Maria and Gary to worry <clears> because he's overheard them talking about money being tight. Right. So he's found, I take it, free martial arts lessons at the community center. He's gone to them and uh, Joseph is there mm-hmm. as well. Um, and after the martial arts class, they are in the calf. Um, having a a drink or whatever and um, Liam's on the phone to Maria and he's saying no it was great I really loved the class it was excellent hangs up and Joseph's like no you didn't you big liar yeah you were just sitting at the back not participating you refused to do anything Um, then it's arranged that Joseph is and uh, Liam are going to go over to Paul and Billy's flat to watch a movie, Mm -hmm. which at first I was thinking, why? And then it's like, oh, the quad squad. Yeah. You can't watch a movie there. Yeah. You know, Um, they have to be let out of their room at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, And I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell if Liam genuinely wanted to hang out with Joseph, who's a few years younger than him, or was he right from the start... It just felt. I think he was. I think he was using Joseph for access. Do you think he was, or was he just using Joseph to help make Maria feel better? No, I think he was just using him for access. Because I think I think he somehow knew that Paul had drugs. Right. Yeah. Um, So, anyways, they go over to watch the movie, and Bernie's supposed to be popping in to keep an eye on them. She pops in for a little while. and eats half of the snacks they bought for it. So they go rummaging through the cupboards looking for more snacks. And Liam finds Paul's uh, like daily medication. Yeah. So his, his diazepam. diazepam. Yeah. So um, which is like a muscle relaxant. Yeah. Um, sort of thing, but also an anxiety mm-hmm. drug. Um, so he pockets that container. Um, and then not long after he heads off home. Uh, Forgot to mention. Sorry, my notes are in a bit of disarray because I wasn't able to type them all it's, out. I mean, it's inexcusable. I know. Um, while <laughs> Joseph and Liam were there in the flat, Joseph was asking him how he's feeling about going back to school with if it's better now that Mason's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. And Liam starts to have a panic attack in front of Joseph. Yeah. Um, and he's using his inhaler. And Joseph's quite scared. And sure. he says to him afterwards, I think, like he said, I think we should call your mom. Yeah. And they talk about it a little bit, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and Liam admits that he's very scared when he has them as mm-hmm. well, because mm-hmm. he feels he can't breathe. Um, so after Liam leaves and Billy comes home to finish packing a bag for Paul, who's in the hospital, goes to get his meds. Mm-hmm. They're not there. Mm-hmm. So he's questioning Joseph and he very quickly realizes that Liam probably took them yeah so billy is trying to call maria and she's not picking up her uh cell phone because she's chatting away with audrey Mm -hmm. at the end of the work day isn't rushing home um billy then comes banging on the salon door because he's been trying to call her he's been trying to ring up to the flat no answer yeah and he says i think liam took these pills from the house um now billy was getting an awful lot of hassle from maria and i think gary as well about how he could leave these pills yeah. out. But it's just Billy and Paul that live there. I understand you're having Joseph come round. Exactly. But they were in a cupboard. They were in a cupboard. However, I think you and I disagree on this. I think that Billy should take some responsibility because not because you're right, because he lives with, with another adult. It's not, a, it shouldn't be an issue. Everyone knows what they're there for. The medication's there. They're not going to get into it and all that kind of stuff. But... He said, yes, of course, it's fine with these, for these two minors to come and hang out in my apartment. Eh, they're like and 12 and help 14. help yourselves to snacks. He didn't say that, but that was implied. Uh, or they might. It's mm-hmm. too, too easy access. Where is he, where's he supposed to put them? Because to be, Liam went rifling and he stole them. It's not like they were sitting out yeah. in, a, in a candy dish. I don't know, maybe not the, maybe not the kitchen. You're not supposed to keep medication in the bathroom. Why not? Because it gets hot and humid. Everybody does, but you're not supposed to. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Hmm. I think you're also not supposed to keep it in the kitchen because it gets hot and humid. Well, that Billy's still wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, Maria and Billy run up to the flat. Mm-hmm. Liam is collapsed yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Um, and so he gets rushed to hospital. It's a busy time for the ambulance on uh, Coronation I mean, this Street. is why they took, uh, what's her face? Ash on. Ash on right away. Yeah. Because they're like, we need bodies. We're we need people. Yeah. yeah. We need people. Yeah. Um, and Liam says that he's been, he was trying to self-medicate with it. He wasn't yeah. trying to, wasn't trying to kill himself. Didn't mean to overdose. Yeah. He just wanted something to help him feel better. Yeah. Um, which I thought was quite, I, I believe that he wasn't trying to kill yeah. himself. It was quite heartbreaking again. Um, so when Maria gets called to the hospital, she tries to call Gary and Gary's ignoring his phone, not mm-hmm. not hearing it. He's ignoring it. And this is where I don't know if Jem led us astray again. So Gary is drinking wine in Sarah's flat. Yes. How did he end up in Sarah's flat with a bottle of wine? I am con- slightly concerned about Jem, CBC Jem, having us miss a couple of key I- scenes. I think we're back to our TV this week. We might have to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Gary is once again drinking wine with Sarah mm-hmm. alone in an apartment because that... Yeah. Anyways, the two of them are just constantly trying to be together these days. Um, and he tells Maria a lie about where he was, why he didn't hear his phone. But then Gary leaves Maria and Liam at the hospital. He's going back to the flat. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason, Sarah comes over to Gary and Maria's flat again and it seems to be at Gary's invitation why listen Sarah's looking all right <laughs> now that what's the thing because she needs a new man the Damon's in jail yeah you know yeah Adam and her splitsville yeah kaputs so she's got to circle back to Gary because there's no one left exactly yeah. Gary's looking all right his hair's looking pretty cool um and so She's giving him a consolation hug that involves lots of back rubbing. Um, and Maria comes in the door. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to tell if she caught them hugging, but it definitely, they looked Well, suspicious. they did that thing where, they, where people, like, they separate really quickly. Yeah. And they're in the motion of separating, so it's evident where they came from. Yeah. I think so. Um, and then Gary didn't help the case by essentially saying, oh, I wasn't expecting you to be home. <laughs> and he said, what are you doing home already? <laughs> That's not what you say. Um so this brings us on to Maria, Gary, and Sarah, and this whole thing. And so Maria is now, she's a bit suspicious. Yeah. She's gathering up some stuff to bring back to Liam in the hospital. Um, and she asked Gary to go and get Liam's charger from the bedroom. And then she, uh, again, tech, tech, tech genius that we all now know she is, she pulls out the little camera, which has been fully charged, mm-hmm. sitting in the drawer, mm-hmm. plops it on the counter, so that it's facing yeah. uh, the kitchen and immediately heads out and goes and sits on her phone watching and listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and she sees Gary and Sarah immediately go back to hugging with lots of back yeah. rubbing. Yeah. And Sarah talks about how um, she tried to kiss Gary previously. But she's and apologetically mentioning that. Yes. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of, but also I think kind of like, a, oh, remember that? You think so? Well, because then they're talking about, you know, really we'll have to be careful that we're not seen together, essentially. Like, we're not, Mm. we're going to have to take a break. I didn't get that vibe. Um, I did. Um, Anyway, so they, then Gary goes to walk Sarah out, which is another weird boyfriend, girlfriend type thing. Yeah. Um, But anyways, they go out and Maria is waiting there and she confronts them and shows them the footage uh, quite rightly. I also did appreciate that Maria said to Sarah, I don't actually care what you have to say about any of this. You can just leave. Yeah, that was fair. Yes, yeah. I thought that was good. It's nothing to do with Sarah. Um, so, upshot is Maria has asked Gary to leave for a little while. Yeah, I think that's foolish. <sighs> yeah, I mean, what are the odds that he's going to go and stay at Sarah's? Where else is he going? Exactly. Plus, also, it's way too much turmoil for Liam. Poor Liam's going through it right now. Yes. Liam needs a solid foundation. He needs to have that calm. He needs to have that uh, reassurance that things are going to be okay. And he and Gary get along really well. Him and Gary get along. He needs that strong figure yeah. in the house as well because Maria's very, very caring and understanding and, and soft. Mm-hmm. And he needs that, listen, we're going to be all right. Yes, both sides of that yeah. sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, I, I, where do you think Gary's going to go spend the night? Obviously Sarah's. <laughs> He's going to go mean, pick up a bottle of white wine. Yeah. It's yeah. right there. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. 
I mean, she's got no one sleeping in her bed. No, exactly. Plus also, yeah, exactly. Maybe he'll be officially in Bethany's room. He could be officially in Bethany's room, maybe. <laughs> no. No, he kind of raised her for a while. Did he? Well. Oh, yeah, don't do that then, Gary. Yeah. Gary, if you're watching, don't do that. <laughs> um, all right, Glenda and George. Mm. So... Glenda is telling George that Little Big Shots, her franchise of it, is going great. Mm -hmm. um, she really wishes she could buy out the whole business because the woman's trying to sell it. Uh, but Glenda doesn't have the money to get together because the woman wants to make sure she covers what her, she's... Her, oh, her, her debts, losses. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so George says, well, I'll, I'll help you out. Um I'm not going to tell you that theoretically you should own half of my business right now. Instead, yeah. I'm just going to say, I'll look over your uh, bank statements Dastardly. and help you do up a business plan. Dastardly. Yeah. And so he does this, sees her credit score, realizes, says to her, you're never getting a loan. Mm -hmm. um, he says, the good news is when I figured out everything that you're making from your work at the pub and little big shots and different things you're doing, you actually almost have enough money right to buy it except you forgot to put away you forgot to pay tax put away money for taxes yeah um which means actually you're down 800 pounds which is a small amount so here's my thing if if she could buy out the whole thing almost but with the taxes she's going to owe 800 pounds how much is like little big shots is going for what ten grand maybe? Maybe this is not a fifty thousand pound no. business. No, George. How is eight hundred pounds holding her back? Just lend her the money. Yeah. Um, but anyways, he doesn't admit any of these things. So Glenda is having a meeting with the woman, and she's convinced her that uh, she should let Glenda buy it by paying her monthly installments, mm -hmm. so that the woman would get there and the, eventually. Um, and get all the money there and Glenda would be able to take it over. Mm -hmm. So George has come in during this time in the pub and he's sitting uh, eavesdropping on this. And when Glenda goes up to do some uh, stuff at the bar, serve some customers, George plops himself down and says... And rats her out. And rats her out and says she'll never be able to pay you back. I know. And this woman was just on the phone talking to a friend saying how, how much she loves Glenda, how she's known her forever, mm. she's a super trustworthy person. And George just blew that all out of the water. Yeah. And so the woman then leaves. She mm -hmm. says to Glenda, no, I think it needs to be an, an all or nothing mm -hmm. deal. Um, and then Todd comes in. There's an emergency. George heads back to the undertakers. Todd's there. And Glenda is raging. Sure, as she, she should be. she starts ranting to Todd. And Todd thinks that she now knows about the will. The will. Yeah, yeah. So... He brings up the will, and yeah. then it turns out Glenda has not known about that mm. at all. Um, and storms back over to uh, to the undertaker's office and is whisper shouting at George because there is a client. Well, I guess the client wouldn't hear anything. It would be the client's wife. That's right. Exactly. Who's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hearing it. The client was fine with it. Yes. Um, and he eventually offered her 3,000 pounds. Which was... Uh, and she said, no, you know what? I'm going to go for half the value exactly. of the business. Exactly. All I did was goad her on. Yeah. So, and oddly, Michael's been the one encouraging her. Know your worth. Know your worth. Know your worth. Yeah. I don't know why Michael's back on the scene for this, but anyways. I, I feel there's going to be a, a combining of efforts between Glenda and, uh, and Michael. Do you know she called him Mike? Did she? She did. I'm pretty sure she did. Like, who the hell's Mike? Yeah. <laughs> um, so here's my question. What is, what's George playing at? What's he doing? Okay, so here's the thing. I think that George has got the best of intentions. Because we all decided last week that he's a nice stand-up guy. Exactly, solid dude. Um, but I think he's got the best of intentions. He thinks, maybe correctly, that Glenda's not built for business and she's going to end up in the hole, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of money. Yeah. But... It doesn't matter. It's her money. It's she. She'll just end up in the hole then. Yeah. He has to then maybe at that point think. Maybe he's worried like oh, I can't bail her out. I don't want to be asked to bail her out. I'm not going to be able to bail her out. Maybe that's just it. I mean, I did. I did uh, think he had a point when he said if he couldn't just give her half the the value of the business because he has essentially 
money put aside, people who've prepaid for right. funerals yeah. and things, and he can't not be able to follow through on that. Yes, he's got to be able to follow um, through. Which is all the more reason to me to just say, 10 grand, will that get you the business? But of course now she's smart because she's like, I think she's doing now, the right now thing. Now she's, now she's, she's like, no, wait a minute. I want the whole half of the what it's worth. Yeah. And this is what we talked about last week. Does she get it retroactively? Is she going to get the past 20 years? Or does she just get the valuation of the business? Whatever it's worth now, slice in half. half. That's yeah. a lot of money. It is, but she's missed out in 20 years of money. 20 years. George hasn't owned it that long, has he? I think so. Oh, maybe. I guess it was over 10 years ago yeah. that Archie was on the yeah, scene. I think so. Um, uh, okay, well then, Steve. We're only going to touch briefly on Steve. Yeah. So Steve, um, his original match from the free uh, dating website, Demi, mm-hmm. has reappeared. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he has arranged to meet her for a date in the Rovers once mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Um, this time he comes in and she is waiting. She's got the pints ready. Yeah. For the two of them. Yeah. She's gorgeous. Yeah. And she's hilarious. Yeah. She loves Weathy County and hates Tommy O. Yeah. So. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I think Steve thinks that's pretty Things good. looking pretty good for Demi. Um, so here's my question. Is Demi legit? Is this for real? I, the, rom- the romantic in me, Shannon, <laughs> says yes. Says that it's for real and they're a match. And he's, they've found each other, and that's lovely. I think that's nice. The fan of Coronation Street to me says, no, it's going to go horribly wrong. Uh, just because it's not going to be a good relationship, or is she planning from the outset to take advantage of it? It's always going to be, it's, in Coronation Street, it's always some sort of wacky thing, like she'll be like from Chit Chat or something. Right. <laughs> she just wants to get the, the inside story about how Tommy O ran off with Ooh. his wife. Yeah, okay. And she might not like Tommy O, yep. but her motives aren't pure. Right, okay, okay. I'll take it. Yeah, right. Um, speaking of impure motives, Daniel and Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I can't defend Bethany this no, week. No, no. No, I will defend her. I'll defend her. Mm, I, I, well, you're wrong for a start. Well, let's talk about it first. Then. So they're, the police are doing a, a recreation. They're filming a recreation mm-hmm. um, to try to jog people's memory, or, uh, get some attention to Lauren's case. Um and D.S. Swain, being the mm-hmm. consummate professional, has been like, you know who I need to contact about this? Amy Barlow. Because I need to ask her not to talk about Lauren on her radio show. Because, I mean, that's it. I mean, the thing is, the thing that struck me when we were in Manchester was that everybody's listening to student radio. Yes, yeah. yes. Especially... By a first-timer. The first-timer who's now got a maybe a daily interview show yeah, happening? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, Dee Dee's there and Dee Dee agrees. And mm-hmm. tells Amy, yep, hold off. Okay. So Amy's held off. They are filming the recreation at Lauren's flat. Um, Daniel has decided, it was a bit of like a, a festive atmosphere. Everyone's like, oh, are you going to go watch the <laughs> yeah. reenactment, the recreation? Which, I mean, I think that that rings true for a small town. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it says, would be the talk of the town. Yeah. And then you'd have this. The talk be, of the neighborhood. It'd be a film crew and stuff. But it'd be a thing. Yeah. Um, so Daniel has decided he should not go, mm-hmm. as he is still somewhat of a suspect. That's right. Um, Bethany goes, because she wants to watch it, and she suddenly gets a bit panicky. And uh, I'm glad they spelled out in this week's episodes who it was that she saw, because I couldn't recognize the guy. But no. But it's uh, Nathan, who was the one who groomed Bethany when he had her doing sex work. I had a hard time remembering that storyline. Yes. So I believe Nathan was Bethany's uh, boyfriend in that way of Mm. all these groomers start with being a boyfriend. And then I think, um, like, I think he, I think he was buying her jewelry, just thinking of the Lauren connection. Right. Um, But he turned abusive and Mm. then was having her um, have sex with his friends oh, yeah. and then other people. Like at a, at a house party sort of style yes. thing. Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah. Um, and then, well, now, correct me, wasn't I, if I'm wrong, was Nathan wearing a policeman's uniform? I couldn't tell. I got distracted. He was wearing a high-vis vest, wasn't he? I think he was, but there was also a guy next to him who was also staring at Bethany, and I was like, which one of yeah. you are we supposed to be Looking worried about? about? Yeah. So it took me a, a minute. Um, but Nathan, so Nathan is supposed to be in prison. And as far as Bethany knows, 
is in prison currently. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes back to the flat. She's all freaked out. Mm-hmm. Tells Daniel that uh, she often has flashes where she thinks she sees Nathan um, because she's so terrified of him. Mm. But then she sort of takes a deep breath and looks again, and it's it it's, not. And it's not. But this time she looked again, and it was, and it was him. him. Yeah. And uh, but she knows he should be in prison still. And Daniel says that the police would let you know if he were being released. Mm. Um, but Daniel just keeps essentially he's saying to her, "You were wrong. It wasn't Nathan. You just imagined it." Mm-hmm. And Bethany's sure it was him. Why does no one call their favorite DS Swain? I know it would be a simple and question, say, right? Can you just tell me? Can you just confirm if Nathan's still? I think in you're June? allowed to ask that, are you? I would think you are. And if you don't know where Especially to start, if you're part of the case. If you don't know where to start, I feel DS Swain yeah. is a good person to tell you where to go. Where's the tank? The tank would know. Exactly. He wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't though. say anything. He's uh, he's useless. I was going to say tight-lipped consummate professional, but yes, useless yeah, yeah, is probably exactly. more like it. Yeah. Um, so then Daniel uh, says Nikki's coming by, mm-hmm. and Bethany's all stroppy when Nikki's there. But Nikki has come by to say to Daniel, and by extension Bethany, that she is going to meet this young woman, Ellie, um, who has been working as a sex worker and says she has info about Lauren, mm-hmm. Lauren's disappearance. Mm-hmm. Um Bethany wants to go right. um, to meet her as well. And Nikki says, no, absolutely not. Uh, she has entrusted me with this. She's very nervous, um, is scared. Mm. She's afraid she, it's, she's going to be found out that she's talking to someone. Sure. And, and she's concerned. Um, so you can't come. So Nikki goes and meets the young woman, sort of slowly talks her into bringing bringing out a bit more about herself. They go and get something to eat. Um, Nikki tells her she knows what it's like. She had done sex work as well herself. Mm -hmm. Um, This woman's starting to open up to her. And then Bethany comes clomping Mm -hmm. around the corner. Barging in. Barging in and says, Ellie, you have to tell us what happened to Lauren. And Ellie says to Nikki, you said nobody knew you were meeting with me. Who's this person? How does she know my name? How does she know to come here? Yeah. And then, and Bethany just starts aggressively raging at her. Saying it was Nathan, wasn't it? Just tell me it was Nathan. Yeah. So she's shouting Nathan's name. Yeah. Um, She's grabbing onto the woman. She's showing uh, the cigarette burns that Nathan put on Bethany. Mm -hmm. And she's like, just show me your arm. And if you've got those, essentially, if you've got those cigarette burns, that's a sign you're one of Nathan's girls, I think. Yes, I guess that was the idea. I feel it's a sadly a fairly common abuse Pro- maybe, tactic yeah. um, in a country of smokers. But um, and so Ellie runs off and says, "I I, I can't tell you anything. I don't know anything. Mm. Uh, forget it." So here's the person I have the <laughs> here's the person I have the biggest problem okay. with this week. Yeah, Nikki. <gasps> Nikki is this week's bad guy. What's wrong with Nikki? Nikki. Well, Nikki shouldn't have said anything to Bethany. Yes. So no, and Daniel. T- so Nikki is working as some sort of like outreach person yeah. for uh, sex for sex workers. Yeah. So first of all, a bit iffy to use your position doing that to try to get your former boyfriend off the hook for murder. Yeah. By questioning about that, but even more to the point, she told her ex boyfriend, mm-hmm. who used to hire sex workers. Yeah. The name and where she was going to meet. And is current and is currently in their investigation for murder of a young woman who perhaps does sex work. Yeah, Nikki messed up. Nikki is the biggest bad guy, anything followed that, anything, closely by Bethany. Anything that takes the heat off my Bethany. <laughs> no, this she's um, number two. See, I felt bad for Bethany because I thought this is obviously a very traumatic thing for Bethany, and you can't. So you're right. I think it's, Nikki it's brought it all back up. Nikki for was the bad person by bringing it up and stuff. And because it, that it looked like a, a way forward or out for Bethany to get through this feeling of trauma, be like, well, this is finally going to be some mm-hmm. some concrete answers. Terrible, terrible. Nikki, you're right. I hadn't thought about Nikki. You're right. Nikki yeah. was a bad. Person yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then the week ended with um, Glenda and uh, and Bernie organizing <laughs> that the pub was going to have a 24 hour licensed karaoke thon yeah to raise money for paul's charity fun idea and i'm hoping oh. we're going to see some good footage next week and yeah it all starts right now 
that was the weird thing. It's like, hey, listen, we're doing this. And I like how Glenda was like, oh, yeah, like, it's 24 hours. It's 24 hours. Plus, like, I don't think it's that easy to get a, a 24 license. hour license to sell booze and stay open. I, I wouldn't think I, so. I, wouldn't, I would hope not, in a sense, as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was bizarre. And then they're targeting the students. But again, so, yeah, so again, Amy Barlow is. Ta- so, so, someone get on the phone. Tell Amy Barlow. Tell Amy. She'll, she'll spread the word she'll to spread three the people. Word. Yep. Who are listening yep. by accident. Yeah. Um, and I like how they just, they, they, they were, oh, that's right. We're doing this. And then all of a sudden they had a sign. Yeah. They had the speakers come in. I saw Gemma come in with the speaker. And then they were immediately, boom, they were right into it. Microphones were on there. I got you, babe. Was starting. Doing their new thing Coronation Street have started doing in the last week or two. Yeah, the where, editing style. Where scenes are intersecting. So you yes. see Gary walking past hearing. Hearing, I got you, babe. I got the the karaoke. And we've had another scene, was it this week or last week, where uh, someone was on the street talking and then we switched to a different scene of people walking on the street and they walked past yeah, the background shot. It was Stu and somebody else. No, Stu wasn't back until a few days ago, until today. Oh, no, it was, it was Denny and, and Bernie. That's oh, yes, was. right. Bernie. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, that was interesting. It was. So, all right. Now I'm all angry about Nikki, so I'm gonna here. I'm gonna cheer myself up. Here's okay, my good. favorite, okay, good. my favorite moments from this. Okay, I'm week. ready. Funny moments. Yeah. Um, David said something about uh, he heard something on Plat Chat, mm-hmm. and Steve lost his mind, and they're all making fun of the name Plat Chat, and they started talking about group chat names. Yeah. And everyone was trying to get everyone's like Steve. You and Tim have a yeah. You definitely have a name for your chat, and uh, it was Stim. Stim, that's right. <laughs> I like that. I like that as well. Um, and the other thing, uh, Demi, uh, a great quote about Tommy O. She said, uh, he wouldn't give you the steam off his burp. That sounds like something you and Nicola would say. <laughs> uh, did you have any? I, there wasn't as, I mean, there's nothing that topped uh, Timmy Two Pints from last week. That was really my favorite. <laughs> there wasn't a moment like that, but it's all kind of more serious with, with Roy and, uh, mm-hmm. and sort of getting the Lauren thing and stuff and with Bethany. So, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a funny, favorable, favorable, favorite moment. No, I don't. Um, so for a lovely moment, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to pick uh, Dev and Bernie's relationship. Yes. They were having a bit of a heart to heart. Um, Bernie was looking through uh, essentially memories tin that she keeps yeah. um, with photos and everything. And the two of them were talking and uh, uh, she was pointing out that she and Dev, both uh, parents that raised twins, yeah. which yeah. I hadn't thought about. Um, and Bernie asked Dev if he essentially miss, missed his other children. And I can't remember if we know about I don't. It rings a vague bell from way back. I know. Like maybe they were going to be, yeah. And then I don't know, were they back in Mumbai? Because he's gone back there a lot. Yeah, I don't, I think maybe, but I'm not sure. Or were they in the UK? I don't know. Um, but anyways, just generally, I love their relationship. They've managed to uh, meld into, they seem preposterous at first, but they're quite, Quite a nice well i get like, whenever i look at to uh, dev and bernie i always think to myself oh dev you're kind of reaching down then i back up and go no <laughs> I mean, she's kind of reaching down as well a little bit just put up with a lot from dev she, she does yes. you yeah, know it was it was lovely i liked it yeah i liked it yeah it was good it was good because I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the bernie character yeah she's okay she's okay i love dev i love dev dev is just a cartoon yes he's fantastic yes yeah that was a big week. Yeah. And you did really good writing your notes. It's looking forward to being home next week and having my computer to do it. And we haven't heard the foghorn. Uh, no, we have. Oh, you can kind of hear it there. <laughs> Just a little bit. But I thought there was like a ship one, though, that was happening. Yeah, there is a ship one. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so where should people go if they want to hear this podcast to subscribe to it? If I were them, mm-hmm. I'd go to weatherfield.ca. Okay. If you really want to get into it, weatherfield.ca slash podcast, but you don't have to do that. Just weatherfield.ca. And you can sign up with your email address there. You'll get notified for every new episode that comes out. And you can also get involved in the comments. It's all free. 
Um, and there's quite a community of people. Yes, there. and there's some good theories going out. One person had a great theory about who might be involved in Lauren's disappearance. Yes. Um, but I don't want to say it because I don't know. I know. If they just thought of it on their own, I'm worried they maybe Googled. Or if they Googled and got some spoilers. But I don't think they did. But I like it. Can we ostracize people if they do that? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think I don't think this person did that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, anyway, so thanks so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you can find us at weatherfield.ca, North of Weatherfield on your favorite podcast platform. Um, I think, I didn't check our chart position this past week, but I think we're rocketing into the top 50 of after shows. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I mean, it's evident. You can see why. <laughs> if people could see this setup right now, the camera's currently on a recycling bin. <laughs> we'll end with a shot of outside before we cut to the, actually cut to theme, cut to theme. That's pretty good, wasn't it? Now we're going to show you outside. <laughs> we can see uh, across uh, the water and tops of hills at various points, but now we can barely see the ships in the harbor right in front of us. Yeah, there's, there's apparently water out there. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next week.